Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. We're going to be doing a little bit of modeling, a little bit of texturing. We're going to be learning about bend deformers and all sorts of stuff. So it's going to be a fun, fun tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to create a little bit of a posh environment. So let's start off with the chair. So I'm going to start with a cube and uh, I'm going to give myself a little bit of thickness here. So it's going to be like a modern looking chair. That's what I'm I'm imagining here. I uh, think it'll be a little bit fun. Next what I'm going to do is insert a couple of edges. So shift right click insert edge loop tool. So again if you're in object mode shift right click insert edge loop tool and just go ahead and add a couple of edges. You want them a little bit close to the top and you're going to do the same thing at the bottom. Alright that looks pretty good. Oops. Let's go ahead and double click these and just kind of move them down a little bit more just so it's closer to the bottom and let's grab some faces so click here double click the face next to it and that should select all the way around so click once click twice double click and it should go all the way around we're gonna go ahead and extrude and I don't usually I'm gonna keep it a normal space so let's go ahead and just push this arrow in as you can see it's bring it in which is exactly what we want and so far I created this delete so far it's looking pretty good let's see next I want to use my uh, insert edge loop tool again so again shift right click insert edge loop tool but this time I want to see the tool so let's double click on the insert edge loop tool right here double click which opens up the options um, there's a couple of options here. One of them is called multi-edge loop tools. And if I go ahead and increase this to, let's say, 8, and I click on the edges, I get 8 edges evenly distributed, which is kind of nice. So now I've got that. And if I press 3, this is what it looks like if I had smooth preview on. Um, if I wanted a little bit more edge flow or a little bit less change, we can always double click these edges. And we can try beveling. Let me grab everything here. So again, I'm just clicking, double clicking, click. So I got all the edges that I want. And then I can go to bevel. I usually change segments to two. So you can see it created a little bit of a bevel. And then you can kind of uh, work on the fraction, depending how soft and smooth you want those edges to be. So now I have this nice looking form. If I press 3, I now have something that looks like this. So 3 just means smooth. So if I go to, it's a smooth preview, right? So if I go to mesh smooth, I'm actually going to get the results that it basically said it was going to give me when I said smooth preview. So um, we might want to give ourselves a little bit more edges. So again, I'm going to go to insert edge loop tool, double click to get the options. This time I might just need maybe Let's do three edges. Click lengthwise here. Now I can grab these two edges, so like so. Expand them out a little bit. And now if I press three, I'm going to get a nice curved shape. Cool. All right, let's use the next tool that I wanted to show you, which is called the Bend Deformer. Let's go to Animation, Deform, Nonlinear bend. This is one's kind of fun. So take a look at the right in your channel box. There's an inputs. So you'll see bend one right here. You're going to see that it's got a curvature. Notice also that my cube, which is going to be called a chair geo. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in chair geo. Uh, here's the bend deformer. So it's a, se it's a separate node. So with the bend deformer, the input selected, and if I select the word curvatures and then I middle mouse and drag, you can see that it's bending based on the direction, a particular direction. Now, that's not the direction I want. I want the direction to actually be upward. So in my case, it's rotate Z. So I'm going to go ahead and do a rotate Z, and now you can see that it's bending it like that. Um, what's cool about curvature and the bend deformer is like I can actually make like a circle if I wanted to, and I can also animate it if I wanted to like make a book. Let's pretend it's a book. I can flap up like a book. It's pretty neat. Um, but in my case, I actually wanted to curve like this. And then using the low bound, I want the low bound to be around 0 or maybe 0.5. So I just want a little bit of a curve. 
negative 0.5 so that it's still kind of flat a little bit and something that you can actually sit on. All right, now to keep this permanent, I'm gonna have to delete the history, otherwise I can actually tear this off and you can see that I can get some interesting results. But I'm gonna delete the history and freeze the transformations and now you can see that I can rotate this. Exactly what I'm gonna do is rotate it. So now this looks more like a, a chair that you can sit on. Press three to just kind of get a smoother preview. All right. Next, I'm going to do something very similar, except this time we're going to be using a cylinder. So I am going to uh, decrease my number of axes. I am going to increase my number of height and then turn off the cap. So now I can scale this up into a pole. And the reason why we added these edges is because we want to make sure that this also can bend because we, once again, are going to be using the deformer. So now we got the form uh, nonlinear bend again. Use the curvature and I'm just going to curvature a little bit, not too much. Something like this. Again, delete the history, freeze the transformations. And this is going to be my, um, my stance, the ones that support the legs, basically, of the chair. I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to see, look at it in wireframe. I'm going to just make it modern and hip, right? Everything has to be a little off or skew. Duplicate it. Turn it. And drop it. Something like this. Maybe a little bit forward. And maybe I just need to select everything so it looks like it's on a plane. All right. So there we go. If I want to do a smooth preview, I can always click on the number three. I'm not a fan of that one, so just click on one. Um, all right, so now we have a modern looking chair. This is looking a little high. I might just crush it a little bit so it's a little flatter and then bring this, this one down. All right, so now that we have that kind of basically set up, make sure that everything's looking pretty good. Just confirming that this is relatively ground level. I'm going to label. Don't forget to label. This is chair legs one, and this can be chair legs two. Then I'm going to select all three, control G for a group. Uh, center the pivot would be helpful. And then I'm going to label this chair underscore group. Cool. So now, very quickly, we created this really fun modern chair. I'm going to create a floor. So, and I'm going to turn on ambient occlusions, just kind of like a fake, um, faking kind of like an ambient occlusion and contact shadows. And I can move this one, maybe rotate it slightly, bring it down so it's intersecting to the ground. Maybe I want to make this one a little thinner if you want to. I would select everything and again, delete the history, freeze the transformations. Grab the group, also delete the freeze the transformations. I'm going to duplicate this one. Control D. I'm also going to move this. This is now chair group, which I need to change to two. Move this to the side. Move this one to the side. And now we're starting to get some cool modern chairs. I'm going to change this to chair two group. All right. So that's what we have so far. So in this tutorial, we basically went over how to the insert edge loop tool. We also learned how to use the bend deformer and uh, grouping, duplicating, and all sorts of fun stuff. So in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is start, create, start creating more, which is we're going to create the table, the support system, the uh, actual table itself, and some other things like vases and stuff like that. So it's going to be a fun tutorial. So thank you so much for watching and listening. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit like if you think this is helpful. And of course, share my videos if you find that this would help somebody else. That would be fantastic. And don't forget to leave a comment below. I always want to hear what you guys have to think or say or anything at all. So if, you're, if you'd like to see more of these, let me know. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.